afternoon. This is Christy Walker along with Mark Bronke. We'll be calling all the action in this afternoon's women's volleyball game between Northern Kentucky and IPFW. And Mark, IPFW coming off of a good win last night against Indianapolis. They're going to face a very good team, though, this afternoon in Northern Kentucky. There are a couple things that IPFW did last night, Christy, that they're going to need to repeat today. They're going to get, need to get strong play out of their middles. For instance, last night, Dottie uh, Porch hit at 60%, which is very, very good. And they're going to need to have an effective middle attack today. That comes from good passing. So when they're receiving uh, Northern Kentucky serve, they're going to have to pass it well. What make, makes that especially difficult is Northern Kentucky is the second leading team in the nation, Division II, in serving and has the leading server in the nation on their team in Kerry Lewin. Now, the other thing they're going to have to do is they're going to have to play good team defense like last night, and they're going to have to make sure that the rallies don't last too long. What that means is when they receive, their offense is going to have to side out. When they're serving, their defense is going to have to immediately transition the ball to their offense, and their offense is going to have to score a point. The longer the play goes, the more the advantage will accrue to Northern Kentucky. That's right, and obviously Northern Kentucky has played very well this year. They aren't a bad team as far as um, age-wise. They have two seniors on their team, two juniors, and they do have seven freshmen. So even though the majority of their team are young in the freshman play, they are playing very well. As well, during warm-ups, we've watched Dottie Porch, and you talked about that middle hitting, and uh, Lubin has been able to set her very well in warm-ups. Hopefully that will prevail as well once the game starts. The other thing that uh, Amy Lubin's going to have to do is, is run a more varied offense this afternoon. Last night, she did not use her right side or her back row. And what's going to happen then is the North, Northern Kentucky defense will be able to key on our left side offense, and that'll make it very difficult for Amber Borney and April Baird to get any kills. That's right. We did talk about that quite extensively last night, where Lubin is going to have to definitely be able to shake it up today. She's going to have to, like you said, go to that opposite side, shake up their front row. And like Indianapolis, Northern Kentucky is going to be there. And if she plays the same way, they're going to key on that, and IPFW will find themselves in trouble. They're also going to have to come out aggressive, as they did in the first game against Indianapolis tonight. If they can do that and get their uh, momentum going early, IPFW will stand a good chance against Northern Kentucky this afternoon. But they're going to have to come out and ready, be willing to play right away. Like the girls said last night and when we interviewed our Dandy Don, this is a good preview for them going into next week's tournament. It will let them know where they stand and or where what what they need to do before that tournament so we're going to get things out here on the floor as the players break out from their huddles and the first thing we're going to have this afternoon will be our national anthem and as the officials get the final clearance from the main bench we'll be right back after these few messages This is the increasingly competitive world we live in, and this is the country we want ahead of the competition. These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. Just do it. It's a cool place. Call now. Go to work, go to school, go ahead. had a few drinks, did some crack, and ended up another tragic story. Only she doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill.
national anthem here this afternoon. We'll go down to the floor here, but I believe before we have starting lineups, we will, go, uh, we are, we'll be honoring our two seniors on the team this year for Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne, and that will be Kathy Kalb and April Bear. So we'll send this down to the floor. Special tribute to the two seniors and their parents for the 1994 IPFW women's volleyball team. Coach Tim Heffron will be presenting each senior athlete with their IPFW volleyball warm-ups as a gift, as well as flowers for each of the parents. We would like to recognize Kathy Culp, escorted today by her boyfriend, Annie Carr, a senior from Battle Creek, Michigan. Kathy has been a very reliable source for the Volleydons this year at her specialist position, one of the team's leader in digs. Kathy is working toward her degree in human services. We would now like to introduce April Bear, escorted by her parents Kevin and Kathy Bear, and Deb Slow, an all GLVC performer in 1993. April will finish her IPFW career ranking in the top 10 in block assist and assist. She's working toward her degree in math and education. Now for the non-starters for the Northern Kentucky. Number nine, Stacy Sullivan, a 5'8 freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Number eight, Carrie Blomer, a 5'11 sophomore from Evadel, Ohio. Number 10, Danielle Walker, <laughs> a 5'7 freshman from Florence, Kentucky. Number 12, Becky Fisher, a 5'9 freshman from Harrison, Ohio. And number 14, Jennifer Thomas, a 5'10 freshman from Naperville, Illinois. Now for the starters. Number three, Carrie Lewin, a 5'8 junior from Edgewood, Kentucky. Which one? What? All right. Number four, Lindsey Tucker, a 5'8 freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Number five, Tina Lee, a 5'4 freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Number seven, Stephanie Carley, a 5'8 senior, 5 senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Number 13, Colleen Kaufman, a 5'7 junior from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And number 16, Tammy Scarleman, a 5'10 senior from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Head coach is Mary Blurman, assisted by Carlos Chia. Okay. All right. Now for the non-starters for IPFW. A 5'8", 5'8", outside hitter, number two, Julie Parrott from Fort Wayne Bishop Dwayne. A 5'4 senior, number three, Kathy Culp from Battle Creek. A 5'8 junior, number six, Amy Redenbach from Legionnaire. A 5'10 freshman, number nine, Tiffany Martin from Grable. Six foot three freshman, Andy Reichart from Woodland. And a 5'10 junior, junior, number 15, Andrea Woodcock. Now for the starters. Number one, Amy Lubin, five foot seven freshman from Fort Wayne. Number four, Amber Barney Bourne, five foot ten freshman from Decatur. Number five, April Teddy Bear, five foot nine senior from Fort Wayne. Number seven, Carrie the Heat Herdman, five foot five foot six sophomore from Fort Wayne. Number ten, Dottie Money Porch. Six foot, foot, six foot freshman from Richmond. And number 12, Heather Roscoe Teagarden, a five foot nine junior from Fort Wayne. Head coach is Tim Heffron, assisted by Susanna Smith, Colin Leiter, and Jill Lyon. 
And there's our starting lineups for this afternoon's matchup here against Northern Kentucky and Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne. So like we said earlier, this is going to be a, a good opportunity for Indiana Purdue to find out what they're going to go into in the tournament time next weekend. But they need to be fired up right now. They've got to worry about what they've got to do and accomplish on the court today and just be ready and prepared to play right off the bat. What makes this important today, Christy, is Northern Kentucky which is the conference champion for the regular season and rated number five in the, our region in the NCAA, is seated number one in the tournament, of course, but IPFW is seated number two. So this could be a precursor to the conference championship match next Sunday. That's right, and that, that at least we hope that is, is the case. And uh, like we said, well, though, we'll see what happens here as uh, they get ready to uh, find their spots on the floor and get ready to start for today's matchup and back to serve first will be northern kentucky and tina lee will be back to start off today's match as the officials make sure that everyone that is supposed to be on the court is before we can begin and all the numbers i'm sure will match up and we'll be ready to start here Northern Kentucky is starting with their freshman as the first server, and that there's a very good reason for that. She's a, fre she's a freshman setter, and so they get her into the back row so she has a time to get broken in and ready to play by the time she rotates around front. But the second reason is their, their next server then will be the country's leading server in Carrie Lewin. Good start, sir. They go right to the start of Dottie Porch, and that's what I saw previous in the warm-ups. Good setting by Lubin to Dottie in the middle, and Dottie was up high and drove it straight down. So good side out for IPFW, exactly what they want to do early. And April Bear serving for IPFW, a chance for a point. They go outside, blocked by Porch. And a, a tough play there as they just tip it over. Teagard gets to it, but no one else was really ready to play in the side out for Northern Kentucky. Teagarden got caught trying to get off the net to get ready for her offensive play and then had to handle the ball short to the net. That's right, Lubin goes outside this time to Amber Borney and a nice dig on the back row by Tucker. And we're going for the tip and we saw a lot of that difficulty yesterday with the, with the tip into the middle. This time IPFW was there to play it. They go outside to Kaufman, nice dig by Herdman. April, it's gonna be a free, bear, free ball for Northern Kentucky. And I was thinking April Bear, one of the same outside hard hit. Once again by Kaufman, IPFW gets it back over. This is a long volley we talked about that's going to run into trouble for IPFW, and it did as Lupin was unable to make the, the play on that. Right. Where we broke down was when Dottie Porch tipped the second ball over rather than setting it. And she's a freshman middle, and so probably a little self-conscious about her setting ability. She's going to have to learn to take the second ball and play the, set the setter when she gets it. Good hit there by Heather Teagard. Northern Kentucky playing it. Kaufman over the top. Lubin with the dig. Quick tip over by Teagarden. Setting it up is Northern Kentucky. And Dottie Porch that time caught her more on the face. I, mean, yeah, I think she got went, that with her face. Went right through. It was a little bit of a shock to her. And that's going to be a point for Northern Kentucky. She'll have to learn to turn her face towards the middle of the court. So when she blocks it with her face, the ball goes down. <laughs> that's right. that, tough enough with your hands. I that's think right. if you get in the face, you're lucky to still be out on the court. Nice hit by Amber Barney and side out for IPFW. So two points there for Northern Kentucky. Not a big run. IPFW needs to just settle down right here. Dottie with a couple of good serves, and they're right back in this game. That's right. And a long serve by Dottie. Not what they need to start off with. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Her serving has been inconsistent so far this season. This season. She's a freshman, though. I'm sure that's something that she'll be working on and uh, hopefully be able to uh, be more cons on a more consistent basis next year. But right now, we've got to get her in for this game. But side out for Northern Kentucky. We'll see what IPFW can do. Can they get a side out? That was out. a good pass, Christy. That yeah. pass made that play. You want your passers to get the ball high into the target so your setter has plenty of time to get under it and your whole offense has a chance to get in place. That's right. Some of the passing yesterday, Lubin was fighting to get under the ball. Their right. passes were a little low, thus the, the, the kill was not a, able to be accomplished. And there's a good serve. It will be a free ball if they get it over, and it is. So IPFW here with the chance. Outside to Amber Borney and down on the line. It's good. Point IPFW. We're doing a good job from the outside position, that's the left side of the net, in going cross-court and line both so that the blocker's never sure where to set up. 
back to serve is Heather Teagarden for IPFW. Would like to get another point right here, tie this one all up. This time they go backside. Carry once again, and a good block by Amy. Oh, we're in the net. Amber Borney and Amy Reidbach. Looks like Amber was in the net there. Number seven, and that, that was my mistake, Andy Reichardt on the line. And she played well last night with some very good blocks in the middle. Backslide to Reichardt, that was way low. I'm surprised that we ran that play because their setter's now front row. And she's only five foot three or five foot four. And so I would expect to see more offense to come from the left side when their setter's in the front row. Well, we talked, we wanted it to go to the right side. Maybe that wasn't the best time to do it. Uh, but Andy Reichardt was a little low on that one. This time she didn't have to touch it. Lubin gets it over the net. They go outside to Kaufman. Lubin sets to Reichardt. She gets it down, but not a very strong hit. Kaufman once again for Northern Kentucky. Outside to Borney. She just sends it back across. They go for the quick tip and tough play as April Bear was going down on the floor to get it. Andy Reichardt turned around to play it. Really not her position. But that's, that's really a tough decision to make because when you get a touch, you're, you need to turn to the ball and try to get it up in the air. But if it's behind you enough, the defensive player should roll up and make the play. Tough break for IPFW, but Amber Borney's going to get it back. Side out IPFW. Yeah. This setter matchup will be interesting today, Christy, because both teams are using freshman setters. I think maybe North, Northern Kentucky has an advantage in that their team is more experienced than ours on balance. But it still will be fun to watch these two young setters go after each other. IPFW needs to get a point. They trail by three, and April Bears right over the setter. Floor. And that was a good look by Lubin to see that the, the setter was right there. April Berry well above the net, able to knock that down right over the top, and it's 4-2. Substitution into the game number 12. Becky Fisher comes in for number five, Tina Lee. And it looks like seven, the seven going to set? Yeah. And that's right. They're going to put in a little bit more height there after that last point by IPFW to try to prevent that. That's a tough break. That's the roll off the net that we talked about last night. You don't know where that ball is going to go. And that time it went to that middle, and uh, IPFW wasn't able to get to it. When the ball hits the top of the net, the tape, as it's called, you just have to be in position and hope it comes to you. There's not much you can do with that. Kaufman with the serve. Lubin with the quick tip herself. But Northern Kentucky really ready to play. And a nice dig by Dottie Porch. And they go for the tip themselves. IPFW needs to get the ball back over. April Bear. Coming from way back, not even, wasn't set for her. She tries to get it over, falls short. Amy Lubin should not have played the first ball. The setter should not play a first ball unless it's a hard shot to her. But, you know, you have a good defensive mentality. You want to play the ball. 5-2, to two, Northern Kentucky. And basically no pass up there for the setter. Another point, Northern Kentucky, 6-2. to two. IPFW really wants to earn a side out here and not allow Northern Kentucky to make a run on the board. I think we'll see a timeout here if we don't get a side out. April Fair, and once again, what are we seeing here, Mark? That's falling, that's twice in a row that April's not been able to get to that ball. What we're seeing is a bad pass starting a, a whole bad sequence. Uh, Amy Lubin has to run down the bad pass and then the sets are not on target where they should be necessarily. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Or you can just call us at 481-6000 and we'll get your address and get one of those right out to you. So IPFW finds herself in a five-point deficit right now, and they, that's something they definitely want to stop. I think if they let Northern Kentucky get too many more points away from them right now in the first game, it's going to be a real battle for IPFW to try to come back. That's right, Christy. You don't want to get to, into too deep a hole early when you're playing a quality team like Northern Kentucky. Kaufman with another great another serve, and that's going to be a service ace as uh, Amber Borney found it high on her arms. It was real tough to play, and... Uh, that's 8-2 for Northern Kentucky. It helps to be low to the ball when you're trying to play it because that way the natural motion is to go up in the air with it. That was much better. Amber plays that one. Lubin sets outside to April Bear, hitting hard. Off the block, they're able to play it. They just get it back into play. Lubin. See there, Amy Lubin took another ball she That's shouldn't right. have. 
April Bear brings it back over. This time it's an advantage for IPFW. It goes out of bounds and they get it back. And there's Heffron yelling at the team right now. And I think that's what he's telling is that, Amy, you, you aren't to play setters. that ball. Right. Let, let your other players get it. Pass it up to you. You set it. Let's, right. get some, let's get some offense going right now. Now's their chance. And there's a break for IPFW to get a point. Lubin's going to set outside to April Bear. She's swinging hard. And it comes back over inbounds. And a quick set to Dottie Porch, really a little bit off time. Dottie gets the, Dottie a little bit of facial there on the net as she gets the block. I don't think that you ought to tip it into Dottie Porch like that when you're giving her six inches. So IPFW gets back onto the board, eight to three. They get off of that two point mark. Andy Reichart with a good serve. And the tough break as they go outside. Okay, it's the antenna point, Lady Don. So Carrie Lewin found herself way to the outside, and she was not able to get that ball back into play for Northern Kentucky. Now we've got our starting setter back in for Northern Kentucky. So Andy Reichart, she has been able to come in and serve fairly well in the last few games for IPFW and bring them back in, and there's a the service ace. And IPFW is back to within three, eight to five here in the game number one. When and you have a 6-3 middle, who can also serve aces, that's a real bonus. That's right, there's a timeout for Northern Kentucky. I'm sure their coach does not want IPFW to climb back into this. And so they're gonna call a timeout and talk about it and see where they're going wrong and what their, their few problems really have been so far today. Andy Reichardt's just serving very well right now for IPFW and enabled them to set up a little bit of offense. We need to serve tough so that their offense and not perform like it expects to, that gives our defense a chance to transition the ball, which means play it well enough so that our offense can then run a play, and then that gives us a chance to score. And that's what we've been doing here. If they make a mistake, we're capitalizing on it, which is what Coach Heffron wanted to do. He just he doesn't want a lot of long rallies. He wants to immediately take advantage of a mistake and stay in the game that way. That's right. He didn't have too many words to say as we had a good close shot up of our bench. Um, just sure he wants to see more of what he's seen just in the last couple minutes, not in the early in the game. And Andy Rykar back to serve after that timeout by Northern Kentucky. I'm sure they wanted to see if they could shake her up, and they could not. And they're going to go outside to Lewin, and she tries they to come over to the top. Again. Tip to Dottie Porch, and Dottie brings it right back down at you. So, if you're going to tip the ball, Christy, you have to tip it over the block. You can't tip it into the block. That's the worst thing you can do. Especially with someone like Dottie Porch that's, right. that's going to come swinging right Those back at arms. you. That's right. Another good serve by Andy Reichardt. And a back row play by number 16, Tammy Schwarman. And that's another point for IPFW. So they're almost right back into this game. It's 8-7. to seven. Matter of fact, I will say they are back into this game. They're not down by 5 anymore. It's only a one-point deficit. And Reichardt, with this uh, serving that she's doing right now, has gotten IPFW right back and another good serve by Reichardt and a quick tip that time by their setter Lee and Dottie Porch right there on the line nice play by Borney and to Dottie Porch and Dottie is swinging hard today that was a Watch very good out. swing what you want your middles to do is you want them to hit an angle either hit the angle to the right or to the left depending on which way they're approaching the net you never want your hit middle hitter to hit straight on because that's where the blocker usually is and Dottie showed good composure there to know that she could hit to her right away from her body and find an open spot on the court. That's right. We've got some more height coming in for Northern Kentucky. Jennifer Thomas, a freshman, coming up to uh, try to face off a little bit against Dottie. They go outside to uh, Lewin, though, and Dottie able to make the block. Over for IPFW. Tough break for Teagarden, and IPFW scrambling to the bleachers, unable to play it, and that's a side out for Northern Kentucky. So that's what they wanted. But IPFW able to come back from a five-point deficit to tie this back up at eight apiece. We have a couple substitutions. Number four, Lindsey Tucker came back in, and Jennifer Thomas was only in to uh, go against Dottie Porch in the front row. They got the side out, though, and she came right back out of the game. Carrie Herdman also came in for Andy Reichardt of IPFW. So now, what will one out of Carrie Herdman is to make a defensive play here. That's what's expected of the defensive specialist when she comes in, is to make an important defensive play for the team. Well, Lindsay Tucker with the service ace on her first serve to take it 9-8 to eight, Northern Kentucky. And the second serve into the net, side out IPFW. 
I think this should be a good rotation for us as well. Their setter's still front row, and now our setter is back row, so we have more offensive options. Lubin with the serve, IPFW. Oh, and I believe that ball would have been out. Herdman decided to play it. There and may have been a touch. Did you see any, either the line judge call a touch on that, Kristen? I wasn't sure if he called it down here on the right corner. It's hard to tell from where we are. We're right above the net, and we can't always see the ball deflection. There's a nice uh, just knockdown over the net by number 16, Tammy Schlarman. There was, a, there was something, uh, if you saw our setter, Amy Lubin did not jump. She raised her hands, and that came very close to being an illegal block because she's a back row player. If she had touched the ball, they may have called it. Heather Teagarden comes up with the kill, and side out IPFW. Northern Kentucky able to put two points on the board, go back up 10 to 8. So April Bear needs to come up with some uh, good serving here from senior player for IPFW. We'll see what she can do if she can rally this team right back into this game. That was a good serve. They go outside, Another blocked block. by Dottie Porch and Heather Teagarden. So that block has been there consistently so far today, and that may be what has kept IPFW into this game so far. What's happening with those outside sets for Northern Kentucky is they're not high enough and they're not out far enough, so the, the hitter is trying to is down already and trying to tip the ball into that big block. Super She's serve there, and they were able to dig the ball, get it back over, chance for IPFW point. Heather Teagarden from the back row. What, actually, she was not from the back row. It's what's called a combination. She's the second option player in the same position on the net. So the blockers go up with Dottie Porch naturally, and then Heather's right behind her and gets the set. And unfortunately there, there's a long serve. So IPFW brings it right back, ties it up 10 apiece. They have not been able to take a hold of this game, though. And they give it a side out to Northern Kentucky. So number three, Carrie Lewin. Nice dig by T Garden. Lewin sets it outside to Borney. And that was a big kill because we got we got Lewin out of the serving position. Andy Reichart coming back into the game for Herdman. And Dottie Porch is back to serve. See if Dottie can uh, make up for the service there on the last one. She has a nice drop serve. Very easy, but over the net. And tip. nice tip over the block that time. They got right over the top of Andy Reichart, and no one came up on the back line to play it. That time, Andy Reichardt did not turn around and attempt to play the ball, and it was her ball. The last time, she reached too far, but this time she didn't make the effort. And if a player's going to make a mistake, Christy, you'd rather have them make an effort where they shouldn't rather than not make the effort. So Northern Kentucky with the serve. Schlarman gets it back to Amber Borney. Lubin this time out. Tied to Amber, and it's a kill. Side out for IPFW. I don't know whether that was outside the block or came through the block. It's hard to tell from up here, but she had a little bit of an angle, but not a very sharp one on it. She may have split the blockers on it. Heather Teagarden with the serve. 10-10. Now is a chance for IPFW to take their first lead well, in this game. And Northern Kentucky gets it back over. The call was not made outside to Amber Borney and over the net. And that's a that's a break for IPFW because that's a tough play. We've talked about it many times. They called an illegal back row attack, I think. And uh, Northern Kentucky coaches off the bench questioning the, the official. I think the call was illegal back row attack. So Northern Kentucky with the serve. It's all tied up, and that is going to be close to a service ace, but it's not if Lubin can get it into play, and she does. Nice job she by She made Amy their Lubin. center handle it. That was great. Andy Reichardt up with the block. Their quick set over the top. Nice dig by April Bear and Heather Teagarden gets it back. They're going to go outside to Kaufman. She gets it over to that nice little hole that we've seen many times in IPFW's line there and it's not played. One thing that uh, Coach Heffron has done is he's moved away from what's called rotation defense. And rotation defense is very good at picking up tips but he felt that they were getting beat too badly in the corners and so he went away from it. But right now they're getting hurt on those tips and if he, may, he might go back to rotation defense here. We'll have to watch. 11-10, Northern Kentucky leads, and that's a service error, so side out for IPFW. Good break there as they don't get any more than one point, and Amber Borney will be back to serve for IPFW. We've got Amber Borney won't be back to serve as Kathy Culp is coming in, and Kathy will go back to serve for the Lady Dons. 
have Julie Parrott in now, so I expect we'll be seeing her in the offense very soon. Good serve, and I think they're going to call Michael it called that down. They called it down. Dottie Porch with a good attempt at the pancake to get underneath it. And so, side out for Northern Kentucky. Kaufman back with the serve. And there's a service ace as Kathy Kaufman was unable to get under it. That's so a good zone to serve to because if you if uh, you can see there, our middle is right in the passing zone, and it makes it difficult for the passer to see the, the serve. And we'll be right back with more volleyball action right after these short messages. This is the increasingly competitive world we live in, and this is the country we want ahead of the competition. These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. by Heather Teagarden, but unable to get it set up to Amy Lubin. So right now, Kaufman is definitely serving very well for Northern Kentucky, and they are up 13 to 10. IPFW desperately needs a side out. That serve is going to be called in. called in. I tell you, it's hard to call from up here. It looked wide, but it was good. So now they are serving for the game. 14 to 10, IPFW really needs to uh, be able to get this ball back over and get a side out. Heather Teagarden, that's going to be a service ace. So Kaufman able to wrap up this game, number one, and Northern Kentucky wins 15 to 10. And that's a tough break for IPFW. They were able to battle back. Our broke down easily. right at the end, and that, that will snuff out a rally in a hurry. If you can't side out, the other team's going to score. That's the way volleyball works. That's right. And IPFW and Northern Kentucky switching benches as they'll switch sides of the court here. And uh, like we said, that was just a tough break for IPFW. They never really had good control of that game. They were able to battle back after tough deficits. And we'll tell you more about that right after these brief messages. Check it out. The campus has it all. Learn it, or work it, or play it, just do it. It's, it's a, a cool, cool place. place. Call now. Go to work, go to school, go ahead. crack and ended up another tragic story only she doesn't know it yet drugs make you forget and if you forget how risky sex can be you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months even years AIDS another way drugs can kill she is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. Kentucky in game one, 15-10. Um, there's some positives for IPFW in that last game, but basically when it wraps up, when you were uh, down on your passing at the very end and end up losing it after battling back twice to tie the game up, coming down as far as a five-point deficit, bringing it back, tying it up then from 10-8, 10, 10 all, and then allowing uh, Northern Kentucky to go up and win at 15-10. That, that's a tough break, and they're going to have to come out here in game number two 
and just forget about game number one and play like they want this game. Right. Volleyball really comes down to serving and passing. And when we were serving tough in the middle part of that game, we came back and actually, I think, took the lead momentarily, or at least tied it. Then they started serving tough. We started passing the ball into the stands or where it couldn't be played. And then our offense couldn't run. And our middles, who have a major height advantage over Northern Kentucky, were not a factor. So IPFW starting with the serve, Amy Lubin. And a nice kill by number seven, Stephanie Carley. And I think so that one probably out. came through the block from the way that defensive player Amber Borney reacted. That's right. Side out Northern Kentucky back to serve is Carrie Lewin. And IPFW needs a side out. Dottie Porch missed what they were doing to her earlier, tipping it right into the block. She needs to get it over if she's going to do the tip. The set this time to number 16, Schlarman. IPFW able to play it. And this time they go backside and used a double quick option there. That's right. Kentucky keeps it alive, but that time they hit it long, so side out IPFW. That's very difficult when you have a quick attacker behind the setter and in front of the setter both. Back to serve is number two, Julie Parrott. And they go to their back row, and it's long. We really haven't seen back row play very much by either team. That was the first pass back to the back row for Northern Kentucky that I can recall. But one of the options a setter has when she cannot set anything that's part of the normal offense is to put it high to the middle spot in the back row, which is called the pipe position, and that's what she did there. So IPFW gets a point on the board, but Northern Kentucky earns a side out. Coming into the game for them is number nine, Stacy Sullivan, and Tammy Schlarman is serving for Northern Kentucky. Outside to Amber Morning. She's just going to find herself getting it back over and a little bit long. So, point Northern Kentucky, and it's tied up one apiece. Now, both teams have made a hitting error on what was basically a roll shot, which is probably the easiest shot in volleyball to make, except that you're not planning to do that, and so mentally you're not ready for it. Amber Borney with a nice hit to the back. It's dug, and they're going to call that one to the floor by Colleen Kaufman. Kaufman's been swinging all afternoon. That time she finds a great hole, and they get a point for Northern Kentucky. Schlarman still with a good serve. Amber Morning comes backside to Heather Teagarden. That's the right side we were talking about. We hope to see some of today. Quick tip there, played by PFW. Amber Borney cross court, dug in the back. They go backside to Carly. And four hits for Northern Kentucky. Side out IPFW. Substitution in the game, number 14, Andy Reichardt, comes in for Amy Reidenbach. And Amy takes the lineup along by April Bear and Dottie Porch with the service error. Serving is really more concentration than anything because it's something you do without anybody trying to stop you from doing it. If you're concentrating, you can should be able to do it well. That's the theory, at least. Andy Reichardt from the middle. She was dug, and this time a block by Teagarden over the top of Reichardt. Teagarden sets it to Reichardt. Nice job by Heather Teagarden for the quick set to the middle, and Andy Reichardt able to bring it home. And that's what we need this game. We're going to need a lot of offense out of our two middles because both have height advantages. That's right. Side out IPFW. Heather Teagarden back to serve. IPFW, I'm sure, would like to play a lead in this game for a little while, play the lead role. They've played from behind this afternoon. There's a good block by Reichardt. And IPFW with a chance here for the port. That was touched. And Reichardt no, I guess not. That looked like a touch to me. But our angle's bad, so it That's right. They didn't call it, call and it. so in, without a touch, that was long, and side out for Northern Kentucky. Lubin going for the quick tip herself. Same thing back on the other side from Northern Kentucky. And Teagarden up to Lubin. She goes outside to Amber Borney and down through the back wall. Kill off Colleen Kaufman's hand. Nice job. That offensive option ought to work as long as it develops quickly enough that we can isolate their five foot four setter one on one against our outside hitter. Amber Borney back with the jump serve. Almost too long of a pass to Northern Kentucky, but they get it over. A good tip 
by Lubin. Dottie Porch gets to it. Lubin sets outside to Julie Parrish. She tips over the block. We don't want to get into the long volleys with Northern Kentucky. So far, it hasn't paid off for IPFW. Lubin to the outside for Parrott. This time it did. She drove it through the block. The one that didn't go, Christy, was just set too tight to the net, and Julie was already coming down from her approach and therefore just had to tip it. But if we get a good approach and the, and the set is where it needs to be, we can get a kill on that most of the night, I think. Well, the Northern Kentucky setter still on the line, so IPFW able to battle against a five foot four freshman. So we'll see what they set up. Lubin this time goes upside to Parrot again over the block. They're really not getting up much over the net. Quick tip by Northern Kentucky. Lubin sets backside. Tea Garden from the back row. Tough break. Heather had the shot. Uh, unable to get it over the net. So error for IPFW and side out for Northern Kentucky. Now that was a good set. Set choice, I should say. Perhaps it was a little too far behind the line, and that's why Heather was under it too much when she had to hit it. But the hitter needs to react to that, too. Lindsay Tucker with the serve for Northern Kentucky. And nice job by Carrie Lewin as she was up over the net, hands aimed down. And Lubin went for the quick tip and had nowhere to go with it. The block was already there. So point for Northern Kentucky as they lead 3-2 to two here in game number two. Lubin with the set outside to Parrott. Parrott goes over the block. Nice dig in the back row. They come with the tip. Lubin outside again to Parrott. Parrott drives it down. Two digs in a row by Tucker. And nice hit by Lewin. Five. And it's going to be another point for Northern Kentucky. We don't have a five in there. I'm not sure who they called that on. Maybe it was 14. Must have been Andy Reichardt in the net. So a tough break for IPFW. Four to two lead for Kentucky Parrott. Over the block and outside. And that's a good one. Amy Lubin is going to work that little setter all night, isn't she? Just keep setting it outside to go over. So IPFW gets a side out here, not allowing Kentucky to get too far ahead. Two to four lead. And Reichardt with the serve. Nice serve, serve by Andy. And a free ball for IPFW to play. Oh, tough break to the back row. Back row and Andy uh, unable to play it. Sends it back. No one else able to get to it. And a quick side out for... I think maybe that ball was going out. From the look on Andy's face, I think she knows that. So Amy Reinbach coming back into the game for Reichardt. Tim Heffron talking to her a little bit about what happened. That was happened. a much better tip there. What setters need to learn, this is very difficult for them, is they want to tip good passes, not bad passes. Because the blockers expect the tip on the bad pass. But when the pass is pretty good, they're not up with the setter, and she can tip it through them. And Heather, Heather Teagard right there as Tina Lee tried to tip it up and basically set it for Heather Teagard to bring it right back down and side out IPFW. And service error, tough break for Amy Lubin. Side out, Northern Kentucky. Back to serve number three, Carrie Lewin. I don't think that we're going to be happy staying in this side out game very long. We're going to have to start scoring points. So Heather Teagarden slams it down into the block, and Tammy Schlarman charged with a, a lift call. Maybe we can score off Julie Parrott's serve. She'll be jump serving. She's been pretty effective this year. Parrott with the serve. Set goes outside. Kaufman is wide. So there's a point for IPFW, and they tie it up for a piece. Good smart play by our defense. The set was inside, so the blockers adjusted in. And when the hitter tried to bring it outside of the blockers, everybody pulled their hands down and let, the, let her hit it out of bounds. Parrott with the second good serve. Lee sets outside, and Kaufman was swinging earlier. We haven't seen much out of her there for a couple minutes, but she was up and swinging then. And a side out to Northern Kentucky. Number nine coming back into the game for Northern Kentucky, Stacy Sullivan. And a serve right back at you. Let's see if IPFW can get it back into play. They do. Amber Borney gets it in. Lee sets it this time to the middle. And a very good tip by number seven, Stephanie Carley. I'm not sure why we got caught on that. It was a fairly obvious uh, what's called a 51x2 option. Yet we didn't go up with the middle. We didn't go up with the second option. She just tipped it on the floor. 
So Point Northern Kentucky, they take the lead five to four. The back side to Heather Teagard. Nice job by Heather. Over the top. Good pass to Lubin. Outside to Amber Borney, and she just finds it short as she hits it into the net. Another point. And IPFW finds herself once again trailing by two, something that they don't want to do. They've had good side outs here in game number two, but have not been able to capitalize from them. And Northern Kentucky has. They've been able to put a couple points on the board each time. There's yeah, a good they're break call it. for IPFW. An illegal hits. back row attack. Our center was coming out of the back row, therefore she can't put the ball over the over the net unless she's below the net. And apparently they said when she struck the ball, the ball was not over the net, therefore it was a legal play, I think is what Bob Michael ruled. Carrie Herdman and Andy Reichardt back into the game, and Herdman's gonna be back to serve, a defensive specialist. IPFW needing some good serves right now as they trail by two here in game number two, losing game number one, 15 to 10. And there's that quick tip. There's that double quick offense again. Stephanie you Carley. have two hitters, one immediately behind the center, one immediately in front, and you don't know which one to block. So Stephanie Carley's had her eyes wide open and able to see that uh, quick tip over. She's back to serve for Northern Kentucky, and that's going to be a service ace as Julie Pierre was unable to play it. One of our problems right now is we know we're going to have a difficult time passing them because they're a very good serving team, but we made too many unforced errors already, hitting errors and so forth that we shouldn't have made, and that gave them cheap points. Andy Reichardt over the block, but they got it back, and it's going to be outside if it wasn't touched, and it wasn't, so IPFW gets the side out. Last Kentucky. night we scored very well off Heather Teagarden's serving, so hopefully this rotation will score for us this afternoon as well. That's right, Northern Kentucky able to run up three points there, seven to four lead here, and IPFW needing to get on the board as well as earning side outs. And that's going to be called long this time by Colleen Kaufman, and she's hitting hard. And I guess who overruled we there? We got a tip, a touch there. You, and so instead of the point for IPFW, we've got a side out for Northern Kentucky. So once again, the side out earned by IPFW, no capitalizing as far as points. Reichardt just had to get that ball back over. Lee sets it outside to Lewin, and this time it's wide. They're coming down that line a lot. I, I would expect that our coaching staff will be moving our block more outside here shortly. It's easier to dig a ball cross court than down the line because there's more time to get in position. Amber Borney with the jump serve. Lee sets quickly to the middle. Good defensive play there by Amy Lee. And this time it's cross court and wide by Julie Parrott. So side out for Kentucky. There's another one of those unforced errors I mentioned early, earlier. When you, when you get your mental concentration down, you tend to make the errors on the easy things, not the difficult plays. And that's what we have to change right now. Tucker with the serve, service error on top of the net, side out IPFW. Coming in, Dottie Porch for Kerry Herdman. And Andy Reichardt will be back to serve. IPFW needing to get a few points. Andy was able to run up another score there in game number one to get them back into a tie position. We'll see if her serve comes back into assistance for IPFW right now. IPFW the chance to score outside to Parrott. Parrott, nice kill. Julie Parrott to the back row and nothing but hard wood point IPFW. It's, it's only a two point lead now for Northern Kentucky. And Even we'll though see. our setter's up up on the net right now. This is a good rotation for us because we have a very tall middle. And their middle has to hold with her. That leaves Julie Parrott one-on-one -on -one up on their 5-4 setter. Outside to Lewin, into the block. We found ourselves a little bit away from the net, but they were able to play it. So IPFW giving Northern Kentucky a chance to set it up. Once again, a short tip by Lewin. IPFW outside to Parrott. Parrott with a good hit. Nice dig by Kaufman, and oh, another hit by Gary Lewin. It was basically out of play. Teagarden played it, and a tough break for IPFW. There probably was a touch on that. That ball came off on an odd angle, and the way Heather made that last-minute move to get it means she, was, she saw the touch. So Northern Kentucky's number five, Tina Lee, will be back to serve. She's their setter, five to seven. IPFW down by two. Quick set to Dottie Porch. We haven't seen the set to the middle very often lately, and Dottie uh, definitely ready to do some swinging, I think. And so side out, Amy Lubin back to serve. 
for IPFW and see if she can get something going. Good tough serve. On the outside. And this time it is going to be called wide by number seven, Stephanie Carley. So point for IPFW, seven to six, and they're on their way back to try to get control of game number two. Good dig in the back row. A tough play. Nice job by Lubin. Free ball for Northern Kentucky. Let's see what IPFW can do with it. Oh, and that was out, but Ryan Bach plays it. The bench called it. She heard it a little bit late. Julie Parrott with a nice hit. At least she uh, played it well. That's right. Good volley going on, and Stephanie Carley tip over the block. No one there. Side out for NKU. There we saw what Tim Heffron was worried about today, that we let the rally go too long. Amber Borney made two very good defensive plays. The first one she didn't make by letting the ball go out of bounds, and then the second one where she dug. But then we let it go a little too long, and they, they found the hole. Service error by Northern Kentucky gives the ball right back to IPFW and Julie Parrott back with the serve. They need to get this tied up and service ace. Lindsay Tucker finds the hardwood the, the hard way as uh, Parrott with a good serve there to the back row. And if I'm sure where the, <coughs> the she will be told to serve right back to the same spot. And there it goes. This time someone else jumped in and played it. And good dig there by Tea Garden. Set to Amber Borney, and it's going to be long, and there was no tip, so side out. She attacked that Kentucky. ball from too far over her head. Behind, she's got her fingertips on it. When that happens, you don't get any top spin on the ball. It's the top spin that makes the ball drop as, it's, as it crosses the net. So that thing just kept going. Tammy Schlarman back to serve. It's all tied up here again, folks. Seven apiece. So IPFW battling back after not being able to capitalize. Here I talk about him, and I jinxed him that time. Point Northern Kentucky. Amber Borney unable to uh, take that serve. We'll see what happens here once again. Schlarman with the serve. Lubin sets Dottie Porch. Dottie finds the block. Kemp never went caught the tape. So point for Northern Kentucky, 9-7. to seven, And Tim Heffron doesn't like what he sees, and he's going to call a timeout and talk to everyone a little bit and see what's going on. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of all the intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we're able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Please make your check out to Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designate it for the College Cable Access Athletics. What we need to do here, Christy, is we need to improve our execution. We're just not playing the basic parts of volleyball very well, the passing, the hitting, and so forth. It's better there. That's right. We appreciate your support, folks. And there's a good hit by Dottie Porch. If you hear Mark or I talking over each other a little bit today, we have to apologize. We're having some technical difficulties and are unable to hear each other. So we're trying to pay attention, and hopefully we won't get you too confused out there. We appreciate you tuning in and watching with us and supporting IPFW Athletics right here on Channel 6. Outside to Kaufman, right down the line, and that time Lubin was right there to play her. She's been doing that all day, and nice shot by Amber Borney. I've seen Amy Lubin play all through her career at the Fort Wayne Volleyball Club and with Carroll High School, and she's always been a very good defensive player. So 9-8, to eight, IPFW Herdman with the serve. And a oh, quick set over. Picked it up. Parrot able to get it. Parrot again. Lubin this time outside to Amber Borney. Borney down. Point IPFW. And it's all tied up at nine apiece. Well, the timeout must have worked because our execution has improved. Right. The hitters are a little sharper. Our passing is better. Coming in is number 14, Jennifer Thomas for Northern Kentucky. That does put a little bit more height on their front line. We'll see if it's effective at all, but they go to, to their usual Carly and Amber Borney. It's Doug well, Amber Borney again. 
Oh, oh and this time it's called wide. She took it once. The dig was right back to her. She said, I'm going to take it again. This time it was just a little bit wide. So side out for Northern Kentucky. An overpass kill ought to be the easiest point in volleyball, but so often the players will hit it just barely outside because they try to place it too carefully rather than just swinging hard at it and letting the defense worry about it. Amber Borney once again with the hit. They're going to have to probably try to go to the right side. The blocks, that's going to be called down. Point Northern Kentucky. And they go up 10-9 to nine here in game number two. IPFW doesn't want to get too frustrated right now. They just want to hang on, get a quick side out. They're right back in this game. And with the chance to get in, Lubin, it's going to be a free ball for Northern Kentucky. Amber Borney gets it back over. Lee, quick tip over. Parrott's there. Lubin with not a very good set to anyone, but Borney's there and finds an open spot in the back row. Side out IPFW. I think what Amy Lubin there, did there, since she couldn't get to the ball to set it, she just closed her fist and hit it up in the air as high as she could, and it worked. Paid off this time. That's right. Heather Teagarden back with the serve for IPFW. Heather with a good serve. Lee goes outside to Kaufman, and this time it's wide, so point for the Lady Dons, and it's all tied up at 10-10, and timeout for Northern Kentucky as they want to talk about what's going on, and uh, definitely they, they did not want to let IPFW back into this game at all. You too can join in the excitement of IPFW athletics by participating in the Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons Club is the official booster club for IPFW's athletic teams. Members enjoy priority seating at all IPFW sports events, food and refreshments in the hospitality room, admissions to IPFW sports media luncheons, and association with other Mastodon supporters, just to name a few benefits. For information on becoming a member of the Royal Dons Club, call Lisa Moreland at 481-6027 or write to the Royal Dons Club at 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. So, Heather T. Garden still with the serve. I'm right, sorry, we, Mark, go right ahead. We need to keep scoring here. We've scored in spurs, but then we've North, Northern Kentucky's a good team, and they settle down, and then they score. Oh, and there's that tough tip, but a good pancake effort by IPFW, and not able to be played by Kaufman. Point, IPFW. This is a big break for IPFW to have the lead this time in game number two, 11 to 10. I'm really surprised to see Northern Kentucky, Kentucky tipping this much. It indicates that they've lost a little bit of their confidence. So IPFW right here could add to that a uh, little bit of difficulty Northern Kentucky's playing right now with a good serve by Teagarden. It was there the set outside. Good dig by Teagarden. Lubin sets outside to Parrott. Amber Borney with the kill off the back. Carrie Lewin. We need to keep pushing here. Christy, remember yesterday you said that we have a tendency to let up when we get to 12 and 13 points, and we can't afford to let that happen in this game. You know, especially now they need to finish out game number two. They, they lost game number one. They need to pull it out here. Good block by Reichardt, and it's in. So IPFW with another point, 13 to 10. Northern Kentucky a little upset with that call. They would have liked to have seen that called out, but it wasn't. So we're going to get a timeout here by Northern Kentucky. And uh, their coach wants to talk to him. She was just shaking her head after that call. She could she not believe like that call was called in. She hasn't liked a couple calls today, so um, I'm Straight. sure that'll, that'll be blamed, if anything, if they would lose this game was that call right there. But IPFW goes up by 3, 13 to 10 here in game number two. It's very difficult to be a line judge next to the bench when it's the opposing team on the bench because everything you do is subject to their closest scrutiny and of course they always interpret things to their favor. It's a very difficult job. We've got a lot of fans out here this afternoon. There's some of them waving. You saw some of the littler ones we have come out at every game to watch IPFW Women's Athletics. Let me tell you folks, it's just as exciting out here to sit in the stands and, it's, and probably more exciting than watching it at home. And the women have a great team. It's great to get out here to see them play. Heather Teagarden continuing to serve well. And they go backside to Kaufman. And the block this time was outside. And side out for Northern Kentucky. The hands weren't turned into the court there, especially with the angle the attacker took. The hands have to be very radically turned in towards the court. And I think they were hoping for a tip. And there's a service error. Big, big break for IPFW. 
not allowing, and I shouldn't say not allowing because Northern Kentucky basically shot themselves in the foot on that one when they're leading 13 and behind 13 to 10. And uh, they, right. want, they really needed a point there. And instead, IPFW gets a free side out. They didn't have to earn it. So coming in to serve for IPFW will be number three, Kathy Call. We now have two defensive specialists in the game, so hopefully that will help us turn some That's balls. right, Kathy Kopp and Carrie Herdman on the back row. They go outside to Lewin. Nice play by Kopp, and it gets back over by Julie Parrott. We'll see what happens here. They come outside once again to Lewin. This time it's wide. Point IPFW, and now Northern Kentucky finds herself in the position of having to get a side out as IPFW did. As it was in the same same point system, 14-10 in game number one, and this time it's IPFW's advantage. So we'll see what happens. Good hit there, dig by Kerry Herdman. Outside to Parrot. Parrot drives it down. She came right through the block on that. That's right, IPFW returns the favor, 15-10. IPFW wins game number two, and way to go. The fans are on their feet for that one. IPFW rallies back takes control at 11 to 10 and wraps it up in game number two. And we'll be right back for more volleyball action right after these brief messages. Mental illness. We fear it. We laugh at it. We scorn it. We think it's shameful. But these are misunderstandings. Misunderstandings that will fade away if we see mental illness for what it really is. A medical disease. A disease that can be treated if you just know where to turn. For an informative booklet, call the American Mental Health Fund. Children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. Vince, that new dummy cam is great. Yeah, it'll sure give people a whole new outlook on what it's like when you don't wear a safety belt. I think they'll get the picture. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. After dating the guy forever, you think I could tell him anything. Why is it so hard? I'm really scared. It takes a lot of guts to tell someone he's too drunk to drive. But you can do it. Just say it. Because if you don't... There may be nothing left to say. Kevin, I'm gonna drive. Take the keys, call a cab, take a stand. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. fatal accident tonight only he doesn't know it yet drugs make you forget and if you forget how risky sex can be you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months even years AIDS another way drugs can kill Number two, IPFW returning the favor to Northern Kentucky. IPFW found themselves down in game number one. 
uh, 11 to 10 and were unable to control Northern Kentucky and they went ahead and won that one 15 to 10. This time IPFW up 11 to 10 and able to finish out the game. Heather Teagarden with some really good serving there at the end. In both of the games so far this afternoon, Christy, we've seen a number of momentum changes. Volleyball is a game of momentum. So when things are going bad, you try to settle down, side out, which prevents the other team from scoring, and then eventually you start scoring. And we saw that happen twice in game one. Unfortunately, we came back and then gave the momentum back to Northern Kentucky. This time around, we took the momentum and kept it, and we're able to uh, really pour it on at the end. It's important to get to score points when you get a 12, 13 to 10 lead, because if you let the momentum shift at that point, you don't have a lot of time to get it back. That's right, and IPFW playing very well there as we take a look at the GLVC women's volleyball. Northern Kentucky was 9-0, and 25-2 overall. IPFW stood out at 8-2, 17-15. So right now they're playing like a Northern Kentucky team that, that led this conference all year long. Actually, IPFW's conference record was 7-2. That's a misprint on your screen. And Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne will be the number two seed in the tournament because they used a tiebreaker system, and we had a slightly better game for game record against the two teams we were tied with. So we'll have the number two seed, which means we shouldn't have to see Northern Kentucky again until the final match. But we do have a rather difficult bracket uh, to play through. We'll, we'll see the winner of the Ashland Indianapolis match. We have a bye since there are only six teams in the tournament. Last night we saw Indianapolis and uh, were able to beat them. Ashland is a very good team, although last night they lost to Northern Kentucky three games to one. So if we see Ashland, we'll have another tough match with them. That's right. There's some more of our fans. we got to see a good shot there of the very, very busy concessions at IPFW. And most of those that run the concessions are athletes here for Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne. And they fill in when it's not their sport. And more shots of fans and we saw a shot earlier Tim Hebron just sitting on the bench and uh, basically awaiting game number three as I'm sure he was very pleased with the way IPFW was able to finish up game number two. I think probably what uh, Tim has told his team during this extended break between these two games is that they have to settle down on their passing. They made a number of errors in game two, but what hurt them the most was when their passing broke down. That's, that's why they lost game one, because their passing broke at the end. And that midpoint of game two, they're passing again. So the passers have to concentrate, put the ball in place so the setter can run the offense. Because there's, there's a, at least in the middle, and even on the outside, we match up very well against them. Northern Kentucky found themselves very frustrated, and you talked about that, Mark, a little bit. They started tipping a lot more than setting up anything, and that's really probably not their normal norm that's for right. their play, and IPFW able to get them into that, and that was to their advantage. I think probably the sets were not as crisp as Coach Bierman would have liked out of her setter, and so she, went, she switched setters again. She's done that twice already uh, tonight, and I think that helped hurt the confidence of their hitters, so they go to the tipping, and our defense was very alert and started picking up those tips. That's right. They do bring back in Tina Lee, which is their freshman setter. Hello, I can hear you on that one. We're getting, st we're getting started here for game three. Okay, They're checking the lineups. There, the second official, the one other. who's down on the floor, has the responsibility to make sure every player lines up in the right position when they start the game, and then he has to watch it throughout the game in case a player gets out of rotation. Our, hey, we're back, and Northern Kentucky starts out quick with a, a point there. And uh, so IPFW wanting to earn a quick side out. As I, as I said, we needed to start off with our passing improved, and we didn't, we didn't get it there. So now they return the favor with an error on their part. And there's an error for Northern Kentucky, so IPFW able to get a side out right back. Kentucky only able to put a point on the board. And there's a back, good dig by Reidenbach in the back. Lubin with the tough hit, gets it in, pair it off the net, and hey, we'll take it off the net and over the top because it's tough to play, but that was worked out for IPFW. Those breaks went against us last night and so far tonight, or this afternoon, but that one went in our favor. Julie Parrott with the jump serve. They go outside to Carly, good dig by Amy. Amber Borney gets it over the net. Free ball for Northern Kentucky. Lee sets it outside to Lewin. 
Long volley that we don't want to see IPFW get into. Amber Borning with the cross court. Lee sets it this time backside. Carly once again. We'll see what IPFW does. Pair it from the back row and it's line. in. That was that uh, pipe set I, I explained earlier. It's kind of a release set. The setter doesn't have many options, so she knows there, there should be a back row attacker in the middle of the court waiting for a release set. So jump serve by Julie Parrott into the net. Tough break, two to one, IPFW. They were able to get a couple points on the board that time after a side out. Something in game two that we were concerned about early. They were able to earn the side out, but not able to uh, convert points. any points off of it. So this time they got a good break. Let's see if they can get a side out right here with Amber Borney. Cross court kill. That was a big side out because we had their, their best server back there. She's not been terribly effective against us. Uh, this afternoon. I think our passers are really concentrating on her. That's right. Andy Your other servers have been hurting us. That's right. Andy Reichart coming back into the game. And, and that's good for IPFW. She's not doing her top performance serving this afternoon. But you, you can put, put, ah, pay that off. I'm sorry to IPFW's play so far. Outside to Amber Borney. Over the block. Kill. And a point for IPFW. We've been effective coming down the line on the left side. Their right back has not done a good job digging the ball. Apparently, the, the block is showing the line, trying to force us to do that, and we, we're taking advantage of it. This time, Dottie Porch with a good serve. They go outside to Kaufman. Dottie with the dig on the back. Lubin outside to Amber Borney, and this time, a little bit short. So side out for Northern Kentucky. She pulled that ball down quite a bit, and sometimes they'll do that if they're looking at the blockers too much and concentrating on the blockers rather than on their own approach and, and arm swing. Amber did that a couple times last night. She right. was hitting down, and finally she got it hitting over. We'll see if she can change that back right here. As well. Instead, they go to the middle. Quick set to Andy Reichardt, but she barely gets it to roll over, but it does. And a dig right back to you, Northern Kentucky. And That's a great play. Stephanie Carley able to bring it right back down. That's why a, a left-handed setter is so effective. A left-handed setter is able to attack the ball strongly on that second ball, and you never know if she's going to set it or swing at it. Whereas a right-hander has to make an unusual arm swing at it to do that. Schlager with the serve. There's a kill by Amber Borney. So she returned that back at that time up and over the net for IPFW. So a side out. Heather Teagard will be back to serve. IPFW leading here in game number three, folks. Three to two. If you have just joined us, 15-10 Northern Kentucky in game one. IPFW 10-15. They won game two. And this time outside to Kaufman. Good block by Lubin. Tell you, she took it up against her that time as Kaufman's 5'7. And Amy Lubin is also 5'7, so she was able to go up well and block that. T Garden still with the serve. IPFW gained a point on that, 4 to 2, and we'll see what happens. Lee goes outside to Kaufman. This time through the block. Good dig by Porch. Amber Borney just lost the ball. Clay lost it. It was her May play. Have lost it in the lights. And so side out for Northern Kentucky. Back to serve, number seven. And a service error. Back to serve. Amber Borney. Nice quick hit, good dig by Dottie Porch outside to Julie Parrott, off the block. And if you're going to hit it, hit it hard. Hope that it goes out of bounds. That's right. When you're in that situation, you want to hit it very hard and do what's called tooling it off the block. Make the blockers put the ball out of bounds. And that's exactly what happened for IPFW. 5-2 to two lead. Amber Borney with the serve. Lee goes outside to Kaufman. Kaufman back to Teagarden. Moving this time to Parrott. Oh, nice hard hit and in. Kill for Julie Parrott. 6-2 IPFW. And I knew we were going to see a timeout there by Northern Kentucky. This is the first time that they have really seen a lot of trouble coming from IPFW. Tune in to Channel 6 Thursday evening, January 12th at 6 o'clock to watch the Lady Norse from Northern Kentucky University take on the IPFW Lady Dons. Then at 8 o'clock, the Northern Kentucky Norse match up with the yes, IPFW baby. Mastodons. Catch all the action of IPFW basketball right here on Channel 6. I think probably what Coach Bierman is telling her team right now is they have to settle down a little bit, pass the ball, execute, 
and use their experience and their, their age. They have a couple seniors and a couple juniors out there, so they're, they're more experienced than we are, and they need to take advantage of that. What's happening now is our height, which is our advantage, is the dominant factor in the game. And that's definitely paid off for IPFW here, and Amber Borney will still be back for the serve. As IPFW has a lead by four here in game number three, the first time really that they've bounced out to any significant lead. And we'll see if they can maintain it or continue on right here with the serve. Good serve by Borney. Lee sets outside to Kaufman. And good dig by Dottie Porch. It was a tough break. That ball came hard by Kaufman. And a side out for the Lady Norse. Now, when you dig the ball, you want to have your arms well out in front of your body. You want to be directed toward your belt buckle directed towards your target. And then, then you steer the ball, so to speak. Teagarden, tough pass to Lubin. She did get to it. Parrot over the net. Lee's going to go outside again to Lewin. And cross court kill by Carrie Lewin for Northern Kentucky. Julie Parrot rolled up inside like she was expecting a tip there. Nor in a normal defensive alignment, that would have been right where she was playing. But I think she was, she was overplaying for the tip. So Colleen Kaufman back with the serve. Lubin sets Andy Rykar. Wide open shot for Andy. The back row was all hers. And side out IPFW. Andy Reichardt hits the ball fairly deep each time on that quick attack. And their middle back was moving up and therefore had to play it too far behind her. The important thing on defense is to go where you're supposed to be and wait on the ball, not be moving all the time. And Reichardt with the service saves. Tammy Schlarman plays the hardwood, but not able to play the ball. 7-3 IPFW lead. Good shot there. The bench for Northern Kentucky. Is this the first time they've been a little bit concerned about what's going on out on the floor? And another good service ace. And I you think know, what I said about feet on defense, the opposite is the case on passing. The most important part of the passer's body is her feet. She needs to move her feet to get in front of the ball, and then the rest of it is a very natural motion. Danielle Freelicker coming in for Northern Kentucky. A little bit of a change up. Northern Kentucky, we might see a few more players coming in right now as they try to get something to work out there. Lee sets outside to Lewin, and a dig right back. Great. Great opportunity for IPFW because that dig was deep and it just fell inside. When things are going your way, you get all the breaks, don't you? And that was a good break. Northern Kentucky's going to call a timeout. 9-3, to three, IPFW by 6, their largest lead so far in, in all three games that we've seen. They're playing very well right now, Mark. And we'll be right back with more volleyball action. Tonight, Dolores had a few drinks, did some crack, and ended up another tragic story. Only she doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. Biggest mental errors in volleyball. That's right. That on, a, on a rally, the other team calls timeout, and you serve the ball out of bounds. That's right. You make that service there, and that's exactly what they hope to do. Besides straighten out their situation out on the court, they hope to ice you. That time it worked out. Amy Reidbach coming in for Andy Reichart, and back to serve is number four, Lindsey Tucker, for Northern Kentucky. So right now, IPFW just needs to get a side out, maintain the momentum that they have going for them right now in this game. And they're going to go inside to Dottie Porch. Blocker to... got a touch on that. And that's the most important thing a blocker can do is touch the ball. Here digs it right back. But, oh, Dottie Porch up and over the net. Eat this. And side out IPFW. Good Co ball. Coach Sue Smith is going to signal the serve here. We'll see where she wants it to go. Oh, we just missed it. It looked like she was going to put up one big finger. No, that's not where she went. Good emotion there by Dottie Forge. Get that team oh, fired up. Mishandled. mishandled by Lubin as it basically slipped through her hands. So side out for Northern What I was going to explain there, Christy, is that Coach Sue Smith for IPFW and a coach on every team will tell the server where she wants the ball served. The, zone, the court is divided up into six zones, and the players are signaled the zone to go after. And they'll go after a player who's having trouble passing, 
or they'll go to a seam between two uh, passers. And the important thing is to make the passer move away from her setter to pass the ball. IPFW need to get going. A very low pass there to Lubin in that last setup. And this time, Lubin doesn't even get it back into the net. It's unplayable, and that's the second point for Northern Kentucky. So it's 9-5, to five, and this time we're going to see a timeout by Tim Hepron, and I kind of thought we would. Uh, they do not want to let the Lady Norris back into this at all. It's all been on our airs. We've had at least we've had at least three here. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to Channel 6 at IPFW 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana 46805, or please call us at 481-6000. And that'll let you know what's happening right here on Channel 6 with their programming as well as their intercollegiate sports. So we've got another good game going on here in, in number three. IPFW leading by four, nine to five. Uh, right now, we don't want to see a momentum change as we are kind of starting to see that for the Lady Norse. IPFW with a couple bad passes there. And Lubin uh, finding herself well under the not under the ball, I should say, and not able to set anything up. So we'll see what happens. And there's the dig back. Parrott, dig. Parrott with a good dig. Heather Teagard with the hit, the roll off the net. Kentucky able to play it. Backside, Carly gets it. And then Carly and Tammy Schwarzman with the block just dump it right back in. And there's another point for Northern Kentucky. Our defensive players are going to have to keep the ball on our side of the net. Sometimes the shot is so hard that you dig it over the net, but if you put it on top, you know you're going to be in trouble. And Heather Teagard is swinging hard, gets the side out for IPFW. And that's the play IPFW needed to see. We'll see if Parrott can uh, get a couple good serves in for IPFW and get a couple more points right back that I, Northern Kentucky was able to take away from them. And the quick set over by Lee. No one was ready to play that. They were ready for the set and the spike, and it wasn't there. Because she's not very tall, she can do that even when she's a back row player because she won't be attacking the ball above the net. That's the one advantage the short setter has. And there's another tip by Carly, and they're finding that hole right there in IPFW. Tim Heffron's not very happy at all, 9-7. to seven. This is a defining moment in this game, I think. We're going to have to stop this and start scoring points ourselves. So as they climb back into this game, they were down as much as six points. And now they're only down by one, 9-8. And IPFW is going to have to get something going. Amy Lubin tried, tried herself there to get a set and another, her second mishandle here in game number three. Timeout by Tim Heffron and folks, it's tied up nine to nine. So IPFW allowing Kentucky to uh, battle back into this one and tie it all up. We'll be right back with more volleyball action right after this. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seize several tons of crack and marijuana, and close down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. And we're back, and it's all tied up here. Nine apiece, and a service error by Northern Kentucky after a good rally. They were able to put six points up on the board. We're going to have a couple substitutions for IPFW. Andy Reichart coming in for Amy Reidbach. And Carrie Herdman's coming in for Dottie Porch. And Carrie, the defensive specialist, back to serve for IPFW. And IPFW really needing to rally and get something going themselves. They were playing very, very well here at the beginning of game number three, coming off of the win in game number two. So we'll see what they can do. Carly, oh, nice job in the back row by Herdman. Parrott basically thought she blew it, hit it, went to the back row. Herdman with the play over the net, and IPFW gets the side out. What you want out of your defensive specialist, make a big play, fire up the team. I'm sorry, we'll give that a point. I took it away from IPFW. Don't want to give them a side out when they earned a point. Ten to nine for IPFW, and a free ball if it gets over. It. it doesn't. So another point, IPFW. Now right here, 
as the same in game number two. It's 11 to nine IPFW. Now is their opportunity to close out game number three, and they'll find themselves up two to one here in this match. So there's a shot at Northern Kentucky bench and coach. So Herdman with another serve, oh. and this time it's long. That was a pretty good serve. Even though it was an error, that was very close to catching that corner. They weren't gonna play that one. Even if the, the passer had tried to play it, it would not have been a good pass, I don't think. So two players coming in for Northern Kentucky, number nine, Stacey Sullivan, and number 10, Danielle Freelander. And Danielle will be back to serve for Northern Kentucky. IPFW had the same break in the other game. They got a side out, though. And Andy Reidenbach found herself nothing but blocked by Stacey Sullivan that time. So there's a point for Northern Kentucky. What you hope your blocker does like there when she's blocked is to get the, with both arms, get the ball up into the air, high enough that the setter can get under it. Moving with the set outside to Amber Borney, cross court off the hit, and that will be a point. Side out for IPFW, and I'm sorry, that was off number 12, Becky Fisher. Let's hope we can score some points off this rotation again. Heather Teagarden back with the serve. And she gets a good serve, we'll see what happens. They go outside. Good dig by Parrott, but over the net. We don't want that battle. We want that pass to come up to the front row. Instead, it was dug over and side out for Northern Kentucky. An overpass kill is, is a cheap way to get points. You want to take advantage of that, just like Northern Kentucky did there. Northern Kentucky, IPFW, definitely wanting to side out. Teagarden to the back row. Good dig by Carly. They get it over, free ball for IPFW. Herdman to the front, Lubin to a quick set to Andy Reichardt. It comes down. And it goes to the back row. Herdman gets it, Parrott gets it over. Free ball for the Lady Norse. They set it outside, number 13, Coffin with the hard hit. Back over to Amber Borney. This time it bounces over the top of the net. Good break for IPFW. As uh, they earn a side out right there. That was, one of the, that was one of the few long rallies that we won. That's right, good break for IPFW. Substitution coming in, number three, Kathy Culp is gonna come in for Amber Borney to serve. You remember in game two, Christy, uh, Kathy came in and served a number of points for us right at this, right at this end of the game. And they go outside and hit off the block. Good dig in the back row by Kelly Herdman and Julie Parrott through the block. And they go side out Northern Kentucky, 11 to 10. So IPFW really wanting to battle right now. Keep that side out and then get some points on the board. And that's going to be long. So Northern Kentucky causing themselves as much difficulty right now as anybody else. And they serve this air. So coming in is Dottie Porch. Andy Reichardt with the serve. Oh, and there's the break. I tell you, no one else is, each team is hurting themselves right now. They're not helping each other out. I think it indicates that both teams are a little tired. It's the end of the season, and maybe they're just not uh, mentally up enough for the game. We got two substitutions coming into the game. Number 16, Tammy Schlarlin, and number four, Lindsay Tucker for the Lady Norse. So we'll see what happens here for IPFW. They've been able to earn a side out, not let the Lady Norse get any points here on the board. They need to do that once again. They don't want this to get tied up. Outside to Julie Parrott, off the block. Julie sets it over to Lubin. Lubin sets backside to Heather Teagarden. Good shot. That was good cover by Julie Parrott. That's what made that play. She was blocked, but she immediately, after, as soon as she swung, she immediately got into position to cover her own block if she was blocked, and so she made a good play. And we haven't seen it go to the back row, Mark, lately, and that, that definitely... I'm up as high as I go. If you are overpowering, then I can hear him talk about Parrott with Off a court. nice kill for IPFW. And it's a point for IPFW as they go up 12-10. I think she must have come through the, between the two blockers, the blocking seam there easier to tell if we were behind the court instead of in the middle, but that's what looked like what happened. That's right, Amy Lubin 
back with the serve. And this time it's long, so this time IBFW able to capitalize and gain one point, but it wasn't enough, and I'm sure Heffron would like to have seen a couple more get on and said the side out for the Lady Norse. But once again, I don't know how many service errors they've had here in the last few minutes, but enough to help IPFW out. But IPFW, I don't think, has played real aggressive. Lady Norse are handing them this game, and IPFW needs to be able to finish it out. That's right. Julie Parrott with a good serve. Lee sets outside to Carly. Good dig by Parrott in the back row. Amber Borney tried to go for the tip, and you can't do that when the block's already set. You cannot tip the ball into the block. If you're going to tip it, you have to tip it over. So back to serve will be number three, Carrie Lewin for Northern Kentucky. Oh, and oh, Came off, <laughs> off the Lubin's head of Amy Lubin as she was running up to the front getting ready to uh, play. That's a tough break. That gives them a point. And, uh, Actually, I think that's, that's part of the plan. She's going to serve cross court. And our setter has to run in front of that ball, which hurts our passer. Amber Borney, and it's going to be wide point, Northern Kentucky. So IPFW, they had many, many of an opportunity to finish out game number three here, and now it's all tied up 12 apiece. Carrie Lewin has really picked up her serving this game. Point, another point for Northern Kentucky, 13 to 12 right now, and IPFW is going to find this very difficult if they don't get a good, side out a right move. here. He's, he's changed the rotation. He's brought both Heather Teagar and Amy Lubin, who's behind her right now in the lineup, to come up to the net and get out of the way of the pass. Julie Parrott gets it set up to Lubin to Amber Borney, and Amber right into the block. Carly and Schlarman were right there. So point, Northern Kentucky, and this is what we talked about, that momentum shift and definitely is in Northern Kentucky's right. hands right now. 14 to 12, and they're serving for game number three. IPFW desperately needing a side out. Back to Heather Teagarden, and she brings it down, so there's a side out. They're not out of this yet, but they've got to be able to capitalize on the side out right now and get a couple points. That's right. We're going to have to score some points off our serve here. And we did the last time Carrie Herdman came in to serve, so maybe we'll get some here. Carrie Herdman coming in to serve for IPFW. We'll see what can, what she can do. IPFW needs to get a couple points. Good serve by Herdman. Lee sits out. And now I was going to say outside a quick tip. Moving with the tip right back over. And nice job. Point IPFW. That was a good defensive play. She got very lucky on it, but it was still a very good defensive play to make that one-arm save. So IPFW still maintains control of the ball, 13 to 14. We'll see what they can do here. Lee goes to the back row. We haven't seen a lot of back row attacks. T Garden with the set outside to Amber Borney, and it's long. Tough break for IPFW. They did get a point back into this. Not enough, though, as once again, Northern Kentucky will be serving for the game. Amber Borney's really struggling right now. She got some sets that dropped inside on her, and she had trouble playing them through the block, which had adjusted on her. So now she's probably not got a lot of confidence. And on that one, she just didn't put enough top spin on so the ball would drop. She had open floor, but she wasn't able to place the ball. And we've got a little bit of confusion here on the desk, as I know that Northern Kentucky is calling for a couple of substitutions. And I think they do not have they it must, worked out. I think Christy probably either they've used all 12 of their subs, and that would have been illegal, or that player had entered three times. I don't think she's been in three times. Well, I think we saw both of them come back to the bench that one, went one up. One went in. When one went one, in, okay. One sub went in. Okay. And tough break for IPFW. That was a service ace. That That's who they were trying to sub out, and she served an ace to win the game. So they were trying to sub in someone to serve for them, and instead it pays off. So Northern Kentucky wins game number three, 15-13. IPFW was up 9-3 to three earlier in this game. Tough break for the Lady Dons. We'll be right back with more volleyball action right after this. Where to? Uh, body shop, 71st and 1st. Yeah, no, you love your commercial safety belts, right? That's where you're going, man. Well, I tell her, Mrs. She loves you guys. She doesn't buckle up either. Oh, you nobody's listening. You need any body listening, all the drivers part time. Really, you not? Know, it's just a little slow life. Just put seat belts in my cab. Nobody uses them. Guess they feel safe with me. We 
you'd had half a brain, you'd have buckled up. Hey, bump of breath, I do have half a brain. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. My friend Nancy's been doing a lot of drugs. I know it's catching up with her. I can see it coming. What can I do? If I, like, say anything, she'll think I'm not cool. And I don't want to lose a friend. I mean, it's her life. Right? If you have a friend who's in trouble with drugs, don't just stand there. Do something. If your car battery is dead, you'll just be late getting home. If your toy's batteries are dead, you'll just have to find something else to play with. But have you considered the tragic results of a dead battery in your smoke detector? Remember, change the batteries in your smoke detector at least once a year. you are joining us for the more volleyball action. I don't want to say the last game. I don't want to jinx IPFW, but right now, uh, Mark, we're talking about them facing a lot of trouble as they basically had total control of that game. They were up 9-3. to three. They allowed Northern Kentucky to battle back to 9 apiece, but IPFW got back up 11-9 to nine and then just, just collapsed. They made a number of both physical and mental errors. Their execution was not particularly sharp but also they made some mental errors and they let Northern Kentucky take control of the game. You don't want to let a team come from down that many points and win a game. So right now, this is very important. The first four to five points of this game will determine whether IPFW is going to be able to come back and win this match. They're going to have to make sure they play tough and even if they give up some points, they have to keep focused and play hard. That's right. We'll see what happens. Amy Lubin starts this game number four out with the serve. That helps. And Donnie Porch up with the block, and IPFW trying to get themselves fired up early as Colleen Kaufman basically set it right up for Porch. Lubin with the serve, one to nothing, IPFW, game number four. They go outside to Carly, and block. good block by Teagarden. Free ball for IPFW, a chance here for another port. Another point, Lubin outside, Parrott. Cross court and in. So Parrott's going to get a kill, and IPFW is going to get a point. So they're up two, two to nothing here in game number four. It's nice to start out with points like that, but the one thing you have to be careful of is that you, your, your emotions don't get so high that as soon as something goes wrong, you crash. That's right, and Amy Reidenbach running desperately to get up to that ball and was unable to do so. So side out for Northern Kentucky. That's right. Dottie, I think, likes to do that, though. She likes to play that front line. A little bit of uh, talk going on right now between Dottie and uh, Schlarman for Northern Kentucky. We'll see what happens here. Kaufman over the block and facial. I think they're getting a little bit uh, back. Uh, Kaufman's trying to go right back at your porch. I can do the same thing with my swing. So, I'm not sure. Did Amy Lubin touch that ball on the block? If she did. That was illegal. I'm not sure she did, but they didn't call it. But side out IPFW. This time, Kentucky not able to do anything with it. And it was kind of ironic at the end of that game. They were looking to sub someone in for their last serve, and instead she serves aces. That's right. And they end up winning it. So we'll see what happens. Carly with the tip, and she's done that three or four times tonight. Well, this is where the rotation defense this team was playing earlier in the season would have helped because that's where the left back would have been, right, right behind the blockers, about at the three-meter line. But instead, they're in a normal defense, and she's back farther to dig dig the line. Sullivan comes in for Tucker for Northern Kentucky. And two players playing that, and that's going to end up being a service ace for NKU. That was the passing scene. It was right between two passers, and what, what you have to do there is let the passer moving towards the setter play the ball, not the passer moving away from the setter. So Northern Kentucky ties it up here at two apiece. IPFW needs a side out. Lubin sets quick to porch. Porch just, uh, I think the set was a little low or she mistimed her jump, but uh, unable, the block was there anyway, but it didn't even get over the net. She might have been a little early, but she really pulled the ball down quite a bit. Teagarden with the dig. Backside to Heather Teagarden again, wide open. That's going to that right side, and uh, they haven't done that a lot, but when they have today, it's been fairly effective. A couple times it didn't pay off for them. 
Well, if they don't go to the right side much, it takes Heather Tegar out of the offense on most rotations because even when Heather's back row, her job is to hit behind the line on the right side. They go outside to Kaufman, Teagarden and Reichardt up for the block. So Dottie Ford shirts a point, three apiece. IPFW still with the serve. And I think we're gonna see this, I hope, a battle to the end for nice. game number four and service ace. So Dottie Porch with some good serving right now for IPFW, hopefully she can continue that. And that time it was good. Maybe not a good serve, but it managed to get in and a good kill by Kaufman. Side out for the Lady Norse. Well, that time I think we were in rotation defense. At least Amy Lubin was playing it, but then Dottie Porch needs to roll back into that corner and she didn't. So I don't know whether there was a mix up there or what happened. And there's a service ace off of Julie Parrott. All tied up four apiece for this game. That's game number four, 15-10 Northern Kentucky, game number one, and they won 15-13 game number three. So IPFW taking game number two away from them, and we'll see what's gonna happen here. Good dig in the back by Lewin. Kaufman with the tip. Borney was able to play it. Lubin sets it outside a little bit deep for uh, Amber Borney, but she played it over. Kaufman once again, and the hands rolled out with Heather Teagarden, and so it was off the block. We've had trouble blocking that angle all day, where the attacker's coming, uh, left side attacker's coming at a sharp angle to the net from out of bounds, and we're just blocking straight back at her. That ball's gonna go out of bounds. Not much you can do about that. Short serve dropped right down between IPFW. Watching it go down, Carly with the service ace, and they go up six to four, so this is their first lead of game number four, and IPFW definitely wants to stop the momentum right now, or I think the Lady Norse will just finish it right out. Andy Reichardt with a nice little short hit of her own. I think she half missed that ball, and that's what uh, caused the defensive player to be too far back. That's the one thing a middle hitter can do. She can miss the ball and still have a very effective attack because she has so much floor open to her. Heather Teagarden with the serve for IPFW. We'll see if they can uh, tie this one back up. Real short hit over the block. And Amber Borney through the block. Not a real strong hit, but it goes through, and that's a point for IPFW. So far this game, there hasn't really been much in the way of momentum shifts in that both teams are playing at a very high emotional level. And so one team gets two points, and the next one gets two. Heather Teagarden with a good serve. They go outside to Kaufman. She has a nice light hit. Lubin sets outside to Amber Borney. This time she comes swinging hard and sends Terry Lewin down to the, to the hardwood. Players call that a six-pack when the defensive player gets hit in the face with the ball. It's not a pleasant feeling, but it sure fires up the person who was able to, to do that on the other side of the net. So a good, a good play for IPFW, and it's all tied up here, six to six. So we're talking about that two points, two points here, two points there. We'll see if IPFW can break that and put a three-point string together. They go backside to Kaufman and through the block off the touch side out for Lady Norths. We're blocking rather vertically tonight. We're not getting our hands over the net like we should. Even last, last night we had a lot of that trouble. So good serve by Kaufman. Lubin goes inside to Reichardt, and a nice quick set for Andy, but she hits it long. She hits it long, and, and she's most effective when she gets above the blocker, but the blocker gets a little bit of a touch. All that does is deflect the ball up and make it go even farther out of bounds. Of course, it'd be off the blocker, then it'd be our point. Lubin this time goes outside to Amber Borney, and it's off of Kaufman, so that's a kill for Amber. And it's side out IPFW as they trail by one. This time they shut down Northern Kentucky from getting a couple points. And uh, if they keep playing this way, it's going to be whoever gets closest to 13 first that's right. probably going to wrap up this game. Hopefully IPFW can get some momentum going, not with a service error, though, and giving the side out right back to Kentucky. Sometimes you can tell when a player's jump serving and she waits too long before she starts, then her whole timing is off. So coming in to serve is uh, Lindsay Tucker for Northern Kentucky. And IPFW giving them an opportunity to put another two points or a point on and increasing their lead. Quick tip by Lubin and a miscue on the back there by number four, Tucker. 
And I missed the other number 13, Kaufman, and so side out for IPFW. That was a good, good tip by Amy Lubin. She was front row, so she could legally do that. And she went deep, deep into the court. April Bear back to serve for IPFW. See if she can get something going. Service yes. ace, that'll do it. Now she should be coming right back to the same passer. Seven have a timeout. And we're going to have a timeout for Northern Kentucky. I'm sure both coaches won't mind to use this time a little bit to talk about what they see. It's kind of a uh, really neither team having the momentum right now. Just a point here, a point there. And I'm sure at this point in the game, midway, somebody wants to get something going so that they can try to wrap out game number four for Northern Kentucky. That would be it for the day. IPFW basically fighting so that they get a chance to That's play right. game number five. Northern Kentucky's on the road. It's the end of the season. This, this match doesn't count in the conference standings. They don't want to go f game five, whereas obviously we want to get it to game five because we're at home. That gives us a chance to win and gives us the real momentum going into the tournament next week. I was going to say, if nothing else, it'll give them a lot of confidence in their play and being able to beat Northern Kentucky, which was unbeatable all season, uh, right here in their last game at home. And Lewin right into the block. Kaufman back dug by Amber Borney. Battle on the line with Lubin, but she gets it. Teagarden sets up Parrott. Parrott to the back row. Almost a lift call, and I think that probably was, but that's all right. They weren't able to play it. Point IPFW. That's a judgment call there because on an attack, if the ball is hit hard on an attack, the defensive player is allowed to double strike it as long as it doesn't roll up her arms. So if it hits her arms, rolls up, hits her in the chest, that's or leaves her, but hits her chest on the way up, that's legal. But if it rolls all the way up, it's not. Tough call. It's, it, might be easier for us to see and harder for them or vice versa. It's, it's just difficult where we sit, but it didn't didn't matter. Northern Kentucky uh, was not able to get it back in, and that definitely was uh, I'm sure not what Northern Kentucky wanted to do, set it right out of bounds on IPFW side. So it wasn't even really a tip effort at that. 9-7 IPFW, and this is a good good time for IPFW to get, they can get one or two more points, and there's a service ace off of Kaufman. So April Bear right now, this is her chance. This is her last home game. She wants to serve tough, and this is going to be a challenge for her. Northern Kentucky calling a timeout. IPFW gets a quick three points on the board. And we're going to be right back after these volley after these messages for more volleyball action. Please stay with us. Check it out. The campus has it all. Learn it or work it. Play it, just do it. It's a cool place. Call now. Go to work, go to school, go ahead. And we're back in another good serve by senior April Bear. We'll see what happens. That's long, no so. Touch on the net. No, nope. no touch point IPFW, 12 to 7. So substitution coming in for the Lady Norris. Change number setters 12. again. Yeah, Becky Fisher's coming in. I said earlier it was going to be interesting to follow this freshman to freshman matchup for setters, and they've, they've substituted her in and out often tonight. That's right, we've seen Lee come in and out of the game, substituting with Becky Fisher. Good dig by April Bear. They're fighting for it. April gets it back over. Free ball for the Lady Norse. No, they don't because they set it over. Oh, what a miscue for the Lady Norse and a big, big, big break for IPFW. Good aggressive play there. As soon as that ball cross, cross, breaks the plane of the net, it's a free ball. And so the blocker has to be ready to go after it aggressively. So April Bear continues to serve as it's now 12 to 7. April has been able to put five points on the board for IPFW. And let's see what, oh, that's that tough break. Quick tip up over the top. Tina Lee dropped it right down in the middle, and they got a side out. IPFW's got the momentum with them right now. They didn't need that help for Northern Kentucky, but they don't have to earn their side out. Instead, Northern Kentucky hands it over to them. So Lubin gets a chance at serving, and IPFW gets a chance at winning here game number four. Serve. Outside, and Carly goes just for a free hit over. 
Lubin sets outside Julie Parrott. Nice strong hit. Good dig in the back row by Kaufman. And Lewin goes for a tip, but Dottie Porch and Heather Teagarden are right there. That was a good play by April Bear defensively. Their, their player correctly put the free ball into our right back position where our center was because she was releasing to come up to the net. That leaves that position on the floor open, and the middle back has to roll into there, and April got there in time to make that play. It's a tight play for April Bear, but like you said, she did get to a point IPFW, 13 to seven. Carly no, that didn't go. hit right, right into the net. So point IPFW, now IPFW with a chance here, and I'm sure the fans are gonna stand up here on their feet try to cheer IPFW into winning game number four and putting this into a game five situation. Lee with the quick tip over. This time Lubin's able to get to it. Lee once again, she sets outside. Carly with the hit over the block. Lubin's gonna set backside to Heather Teagarden and it's a win for IPFW. So they battle back 15 to seven to win game number four and put this into five games. And I tell you, we really thought that IPFW would not come back as strong as they did here in game number four after Northern Kentucky was able to battle back and win game number three. But they have come out and showed a lot of aggressiveness and the willingness and the wanting to win and put this into a game five situation. And we're going to be right back, folks. Please stay with us for game number five. Tonight, Dolores had a few drinks, did some crack, and ended up another tragic story. Only she doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. teach himself to read. Where do you go when you can't do it alone? He's getting help in a literacy program for adults. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. And we're back, and I tell you, we've had some very exciting action here, Mark. IPFW rallying back to win game number four over uh, Northern Kentucky, and now they've got the momentum shifting their way for game five. The home team always has an advantage in game five, especially if they won game four, because the momentum's in their favor, like you say, the crowd will be in their favor. And the interesting thing about game five is you score a point on every serve, which means the offense, for the only time in volleyball, can actually score points for your team. Yeah, ideally, you'd like to receive, but I believe we're gonna serve first here, so that'll put our defense uh, into in a position to have to score our first point. What you don't want to do here is make a lot of errors because even a service error counts as a point for the other team. What you'll see is as soon as a team gets about a three to four point lead, the coach will call a timeout. You can't afford to dig yourself a hole. And right now, IPFW just needs to keep that aggressive play, the momentum that they had there in the end of the last game to uh, be able to rally back and really finish off Northern Kentucky, and let's just start off right now. We've got the, the person back that we need back, at least as far as the last game was concerned. April Bear is back to serve, and she was able to rally back and put five points on the board for IPFW and put him into the position to win game number four. She brought him back up from seven apiece to 12 to seven. April normally would not start in the serving position. She started in the sixth position as our last server, but Tim has enough confidence in her serving now. He wants her out there early. That's right, April is serving well right now, so put her right back and give her another opportunity. They earned a side out on her when it was 12 to 7, but uh, we'll see what she can do here. Very important first serve for IPFW, and April does a good one. Almost a service ace. We'll see what happens. 
Logan's gonna set it inside to Donnie Porch. And it's Doug, Lee back side to Carly. Very tough hit down the line. Amber Borney unable to dig that ball, and so it's a point. When you're digging the line, on the left side especially, you have to make sure your body is turned so that you can dig the ball into the court. And that's what she didn't do there. So Northern Kentucky here, IPFW wants to get the ball back, and obviously it will also be a point for them, Julie Parrott. Tough tip, Teagarden sends it right back over, and Donnie wasn't ready, and Carly was up over the net. Point Northern Kentucky, and they keep the serve. So it's two to nothing, IPFW tries to get settled down there, April Bear talking to him on the back row, settle down, let's go, let's get this serve back right now, and that's gonna help service air wide by Carrie Lewin of Northern Kentucky. So Lubin's gonna come back to serve for IPFW. And she's done very well for us today. We've scored points off this rotation, so it, this is not too bad a starting lineup for us. Good serve by Lubin. IPFW needing to get it set up here. Oh, and Carly has done that all day long. She has found that open spot on the floor and just effectively dumped it there. And so it's three to one. Those points are tough ones to give up because the offensive team doesn't really earn it. Schlarman with the serve. Heather Teagarden, backside to Parrott. Parrott with a beautiful kill down the line, and that's just what we saw in reverse for Northern Kentucky, straight down the line, and it worked out for both teams. Both teams are relying on the right sides of their offense now, and both defenses are doing a poor job digging the left line. And Parrott with a good serve. Lee sets to Carly with that tip. This time they were able to get to it. Parrott, it will be a free ball, but IPFW was able to play that tip this time by Carly. Lee goes inside. Carly again with that yeah. tip. Good dig by Lubin. Oh, tough break. You can't get it to fall any closer to the net than that. And uh, that's a point for Kentucky. And they're up four to two here in game number five. Body Porch was too tentative there. And I think that's, her, that's her, a freshman type of mistake to make. When she gets a little more experience, she'll be more aggressive with that. Lubin sets to Dottie. Dottie over the block, but they dig it. Lee goes outside to Kaufman. Dottie with the block. Lee goes for the quick tip. This time they're ready. Lubin gets it. Teagarden with the set to Porch. She tries a tip. It doesn't work. And there's the block. Come on, Amber and Dottie. You've got to be up against that net. You cannot play it back. Those hands were not up and over. We got a timeout for IPFW as uh, Northern Kentucky has jumped up to a three-point lead here, 5-2. I think probably what Tim Heffron's going to have to tell the team is to play basic defense, be ready to respond to the, the dig. Our, if our ball handling's not what it should be, the second player is going to have to make sure they make the play and keep the ball in play for us. But we're going to have to also make sure that offensively, when we are able to run a play, we put the ball down and not give them a chance to transition it. That's right, because we've got a point. Either way, you make a mistake, you give them a point. You definitely like to have the serve and have it your advantage. Right now, the game is in the advantage. Northern Kentucky, they lead by three. Carly with the serve. Dig right back to you, and that's a tough one. We'll see if Amber Borning is able to get to it. April Bear is going to get it right back. Free ball for Northern Kentucky. Lee sets it outside to Kaufman. Through the block of Heather Teagard and Dottie Forge. Point, Northern Kentucky, and they lead 6-2. Right now, Northern Kentucky is taking advantage of the of the fact that we're off our game just a little bit, and they've they've turned theirs around. Lubin sets back side to Teagarden. T has to go too for tight. a tip. It was yeah. too tight of a set. Kaufman goes for a tip of her own. Amber Borney's there. Lubin's going to set it for Teagarden again. This time right she's able to again. power it through. I think right now if Lubin could shake it up a little bit, come back to her left side. They've gone in the middle a couple times, mostly to the right. Um, Lubin can shake it up. I think they might get um, a couple quick points there on Northern Kentucky as they're continually looking for Heather to be swinging on the right side. Carrie Herdman coming in to serve for IPFW. They're trailing three points here in game number five. Good block by Heather Teagarden. Northern Kentucky's done a good job covering blocks today. That's right, Kaufman with the free ball. Lubin sets up Amber Borney. Oh, tough break. Oh, is it's called a point. And the whole bench is up for Northern Kentucky saying that they thought that was out. The coach can't believe it. Point for IPFW, six to four, and uh, very unhappy fans on that one. We can't make that call when we sit in the middle. We it's, can't you see can't see here. the line at all. But 
Kaufman sends it right back to the back row, and it's down point for Northern Kentucky 7-4. So once you battle back and get a couple points, they get one right back in this uh, Cook Rally score here in game number five. So it's 7-4. to four. And another point for Northern Kentucky, and IPFW right now really needing to battle back. IPFW is going to have to side out here. Heather Teagard. There we go. And the right card and made Northern Kentucky eat that one, but I tell you, they dug it, got it right back. Outside to Heather Teagard off the block, and they're going to call four hits. So it's a point for Northern Kentucky. That's a tough break for IPFW. Northern Kentucky is a very good defensive team. They've shown that today. Uh, I think probably Tim Heffron used his last time out here, but he had to. We're down five points. Everything's going against us. The breaks, the, the quality of the play, the defense is much better on the Northern Kentucky side. And so he's got to either turn it around now or it'll be too late. That's right. IPFW just needs to get fired up. Like we said, this could be definitely a precursor into next week's tournament. IPFW playing very well today, though, overall. They've been able to battle back when they've had to. They've actually, though, given up a couple of plays where this really shouldn't almost even been into game number five, um, but it is. They've been able to play at Northern Kentucky's level today, and uh, hopefully they can turn this around. They're going to have to, and that's going to help with the service error by the Lady North. So Heather Teagard is heading back to serve. Now our defense is going to have to take over. The longer we can keep serving and our defense score for us, the more trouble we'll give Northern Kentucky. So Heather Teagard with a good serve. We'll see what happens here. Lee that's sets tight. it outside to Lewin. And that hole, once again, either Carly's dumped it there or Lewin's dumped it there. Point for Northern Kentucky, and they get the serve again. I, we did not react to that. We, apparently, we thought she was not going to be able to bring it back because the angle she had, as tight as she was to the net, our defense has to shift into the court. She's not going to put it down the line. That's right. They found themselves standing on that one, and it's costly in this game number five. Lewin's just going to have to set up here. He gets it over, finds a hole, and gets a kill, and that's a break for IPFW. That's a break, but we have to score off our serve. We can't side out with them or we're beat. And Amber Borney is going to be back. It's 10-6. IPFW not wanting to give up any more points. And she's going to let it drop. She's going to be able to serve again. That's a delay of game, and each player is allowed one, one per game. And jump serve, and it was a costly error for IPFW, that's a point. We did want to let Northern Kentucky get over that 10-point margin, 11. Actually, they've been climbing continually here, and IPFW really just needs to um, play effectively. Andy Reichardt with a good hit, and Northern Kentucky's digging very well right now.